episode 116 of Katrina's Creations Crafting Podcast. I have two finished objects this week. The first thing is something absolutely silly that I started basically because my feet were cold. I made ugly slippers. I know that looks like a square, but there's the hole for my foot. They kind of look like elf shoes when I put them on because that's what they look like. That's where my toe is. But they're fuzzy and they're warm. And I know I could fix this. All I did basically, um, I had this yarn. My mother had given it to me. She had bought it and was going to make herself a scarf. And she started, my mom just knows how to do the garter stitch. And this is really, really super chunky yarn. She was using a US 15, which is what I used for these. Um, but it just wasn't working out. And I don't think she would have had enough yarn to make a scarf just based on how far this went. So what I did, I just knitted 10 stitches across and I knit a big long strip all the way around. I sewed it together here and the bottom and then halfway across the top so my foot can go in there like that. Um, I know I could fix this so that it didn't stick up like an elf shoe, but um, this yarn is not going to hold up that well. It This is just cheap. Um, it, it's just not meant to be used for shoes or socks, so it's, it's just cheap yarn. Um, you can see it's already like pilling like crazy along here. Um, so I really don't think it's going to hold up. See all the fuzzies? It's not going to hold up that long, so it's really not worth ripping apart. And it also doesn't rip apart well because it is a single, I'm putting my foot back in my slipper as I speak because it's cold upstairs. Um, it's a single ply and it's almost, um, it's almost like a roving. It's got such a little twist to it that what I did try to rip out in a couple spots, the yarn literally fell apart. So um, I'm not fixing it. I'm just happy that they're warm on my feet. So, um. Yeah, we are expecting a snowstorm. This is Thursday afternoon when I am filming it on January 17th, and we are due for snow tonight and Friday, and then another storm's coming in on Saturday and Sunday. So I don't know if I'll be at work tomorrow or not. I might be home and have to suffer and, and knit and crochet all day. <sighs> the hardship of it all. Um Anyway, that's what we've got going on so far, but that's my first finished object. Here's the second one. I finally finished my design shawl. Um, it's it's 300 stitches across, which you would think would be really wide. I have not blocked this yet, so I can wrap it around my neck, but the ends don't hang down real long. So I've actually just kind of got it draped along my shoulder. This is the small end here. I'll take it off so you can see it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you can see my stitch marker right here. I knit through this last section and up through the main color. And this is one end. And then it goes across. Like I said, I have not blocked this, so blocked this might be much wider, wider and deeper this way and this way. I mean, right now it's it's probably five and a half feet, but to try to wrap it around my neck this way, it doesn't hang down real far. I'm happy with how it turned out. Um, each of these, this is of course the main color, and each of these sections are a different basket weave pattern. So now to reveal the name of this, it has not been officially released yet, but it is going to be called the Basket Wave. Wave because it kind of reminded me of a wave because it starts small and gets big. And the basket part because it's got the basket weave stitch in it. So it's kind of a play off of the word basket weave. So that's going to be the name of it. I am re-knitting it. I have had some people offer to be my test knitters. Um, but I want to re revise this a little bit before I send it to them. And I also wanted to explain something that I said last week because um, 
I was talking about the Knit Picks palette yarn, and I said it was a good cheap yarn. And I wasn't meaning cheap as in cheap quality. I actually was meaning cheap in that it's inexpensive. I should have used the word inexpensive. Um, and one of the viewers pointed that out to me that people might get the wrong idea. And she's right. So thank you very much, Lynn, for for bringing it to my attention, because I really didn't think about it when I said it, that it could be taken two different ways. Um, but yes, it is cheap as an inexpensive yarn. Um, it is sold by Knit Picks, and I am an affiliate for Knit Picks. I use this yarn all the time. I do a lot of my design work using the Knit Picks palette because it is a good, I would call it a workhorse yarn. It doesn't cost much but it's a decent quality. Um, it's only like $3.79, and it's 231 yards, and it's 100% wool. And it's not scratchy wool. It's soft wool, and um, it comes in 150 different colors. So I probably have an entire basket full of this in different shades and different colors. And when I say it's a workhorse yarn, it's one that's especially nice because if you have to rip it out, you can rip out the yarn and re-knit, and it's not, you're not going to see the yarn wear a lot. Um, a lot of other yarns have a lot of memory to them, and you knit with them and have to rip something out, and it's going to show. It's just, um, yeah, some yarns just do not re-knit really well. This one holds up. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. It holds up well if you if you are fairly new to knitting. It's a really nice uh, yarn to get experienced with. Because it doesn't cost much, yet it is 100% wool, you're getting a, a decent quality yarn for a really good price. Um, and it's not an acrylic. It, you're going to have something that is a little bit longer lasting because wool lasts like forever. Uh, so anyway... I do use a lot of Knit Picks palette yarn, and so I did want to clarify that, that, um, again, I was not talking about the quality. I was talking about the price. So, um, in fact, all of the dark browns in this, uh, this is Knit with Cloudborn, which was Craftsy's yarn, but all of the other browns in here are Knit Picks palette. So, um, like I said, it's a nice yarn. And this is very soft and squishy because it's got a lot of garter stitch in it. So let me show you how I am modifying the pattern. I am using, for my main color, Carlton Silky Aran. Now, it says it's Aran, but it's a very it's a very lightweight Aran. And it doesn't have a whole lot of twist to it. It looks like it does when you look at the... That's uh, not going to show because it's, so, it's, it's such a brilliant white... Um, it looks like it's got a lot of twist to it, but when you start actually knitting with it, you can see that it it separates very easy. It almost reminds me of heavy embroidery floss. That's what this reminds me of, and it feels like that, too. It's really soft. This is going to be a super soft one. Um, so that's what my main color is in. And then my my colors that I'm putting it with are Sweet Georgia Party of Five. And this is the, uh, which set is it? Let me pull the label out. It's the Tough Love Sock Yarn. And the twist in it and the weight is almost identical to what I am using for the uh, main color. So the lightest color, which is this one, is called... Frostbite. This one is Frostbite. This one is Chill. This is Breeze. This one is Bluebird. And the one I am knitting with, this one is called Sapphire. Now, the first shawl that I made, I started with the lightest and went to the darkest. I'm reversing that because I want it to look the darkest color at the bottom just because it's a little bit more weighted, the color is. Um, so I want it to not look top-heavy. Sometimes if it's smaller at the top and it's a dark color, it might look a little top-heavy. So here's what I have so far. The things I have changed 
is you'll notice, oops, that's backwards. The main color here, I'm doing smaller. You can see before they were like this size. So I'm, it's about three quarters of the length that I'm making it compared to the other one. And so this is the first set. There's my first stitches. And I'm also changing a few of the patterns that are in there in the basket weave because I got a new book that has some other pattern ideas that I might like a little bit better than what I initially put in that shawl. Um, so I'm kind of picking, picking that away a little bit too. So that is my revised pattern that I am working on. Next, I'm working on the butterfly shawl. This is a crocheted pattern. This is living in a bag that I got from Joann's with a coupon, because you know me and coupons. And this is a little pin. It's really reflective, but this is a little pin I got from a knit crate box a while back. Here is my butterfly shawl, and I think it's going to be more like a butterfly scarf um, or shawlette. It's not going to be big because I've used about half of the yarn so far. This is called the aquamarine color, and the yarn is Queensland cassowary, and it is, like I said, the colorway is called aquamarine, and the yarn is it's just this fine wool blend. It's a 70% wool, 30% nylon. There's 380 yards in this. So like I said, it's not going to be a full-size shawl. I would need two or three. And as light and delicate as this is, I don't really want it to be a shawl. I want something light and delicate that I can wear in the spring and in the in the summer on cooler days. Uh, so I want something that's going to stay delicate. So here's where I was last week. So you can see that I've crocheted a couple of sections here. And here's what it looks like so far. And the colors are pretty true to color. It's cloudy outside, so my colors are showing up a little bit better. So there's a little bit of striking going on where the colors change. And it is different shades of purple and a teal and a deeper turquoise, which are all like my favorite colors. And I am crocheting this with a four millimeter crochet hook and this is a free pattern it is called somebody asked the actual name of it it is the butterfly shawl the butterfly stitch prayer shawl so that's what the name of it is the butterfly stitch prayer shawl it is a free pattern over in Ravelry I don't know if you can get it other places or not I didn't look uh, but it is a free pattern and the third project I am working on is the Flax Light Sweater by Tin Can Knits. And this is knit in the round from the top down. And I didn't get overly far on that on this this week because I was trying desperately to finish my design shawl. But here you can see where I was last week. I was right here. So I've gotten a about an inch, about an inch down, just right from here to here. So I love this yarn. I think the two colors together are really pretty. This is looking purple, but it's a deep forest greeny teal type of color. And one is a hand dyed, and then I am using hobium yarn. Um, in the it's. It looks like Harvest Gold to me. They called it brown. I'd call it Harvest Gold. Um, I really like this to knit with. It is super, super soft. And I think this is going to be such a comfortable sweater. Now, I did have um, one of the viewers, So Fun to Sew 11, leave a comment and, say, and said, you know, she wanted to make her first sweater. Would I do a tutorial on this? Yes, I am doing a tutorial on this. Now, because when she asked, I had already started, the first in the series is actually just kind of going to cover what I've done so far. So it's going to talk about um, how to do this neck and the uh, increases and 
I haven't, and then the next video will be like where I divide for the sleeves. So it is a free pattern. Again, over on Ravelry, it is the Flax Light by Tin Can Knits. It comes in sizes zero to six months, all the way up to a 4XL. I'm not making the 4XL. So, um, yeah, or even the three. I'm making a 2X. So, um, yeah, if you want to knit a sweater and knit along with me, you are more than welcome to. Um, I don't know if the tutorials will help you or not, but they will be up on not every Wednesday, but as I have another change to the sweater, like the next, the one that's going to come up on Wednesday will be my progress so far on how to get to this point. And then there might not be another one for a couple of weeks until I'm ready to separate for the sleeves. Then I'll do a video. So as I get to different stages of the sweater, I will post another uh, video. So that will be Wednesday's video will be the first in the tutorial series on the flax light. Now it's time to see what you all are making. Now, I have a couple of acquisitions this week. First off, look what came in the mail. I have not even opened it. It literally came in the mail right before I came up to make my video. So, I'm teasing you. Ooh, knit crate. Yes, you'll have to watch Monday to see what I get in here. So, um, I'm sure it will be nice because it, 
always is. And, um, yeah. So we have two videos coming up this week. There will be the Monday video with Knit Crate and the Wednesday video, which will be the tutorial for the sweater. So that's my first acquisition. My second acquisition, I was watching another podcaster watch Barbara Knit. And Barbara also designs um, shawls. Her name's Barbara Benson. And she was talking about different books that she found helpful with design work. And since I'm doing designs, I thought, that sounds like a good idea. So this is not one of the books she recommended. It's just one that I found. I got this on eBay, so it is a used book. But it's called The New Knitting Dictionary. It's it's now an antique, pretty much. It's not really new because this is, like, from 1984. But it has a 1,000 stitches and patterns. And part of me working on the basket wave shawl, I was looking through here, and there's other basket weave patterns in this book that I might want to incorporate into the shawl. So that's another reason why I'm changing some things, is I have some other stitch ideas. So um, this is just, it, it shows basic techniques, but then it goes through all kinds of patterns. And there's other books that are stitch dictionaries as well. And it shows you all different stitches and how to do them. So um, I thought this would be a handy tool. And I think I got it for $3.99 plus the shipping. So I think I spent maybe 5 or $6 for it. Or no, maybe it included the shipping. I think it included the shipping, so I think it was only three ninety nine. Um, and you can see it's it's pretty thick. And um, like I said, it's from nineteen eighty four, but knitting stitches don't change. So I got that. And then right before Christmas, one of the ladies in my knit night group uh, works for a publishing company. And they had some extra stuff, and so she brought them in for us to look through, and we could take whatever we want. And I got this. It's mini quilt blocks, 20, 20 to stitch. And they're just little, like, coaster size um, little quilt blocks. And then it shows you how to do them and shows the template. I was like, well, this looks like fun. So, um, and I guess you could mix and match them, too. But it has all kinds of little stitch patterns and quilt patterns. So she gave this to me, and it was free. And um, that's what the back of it looks like. I really, I really like this one and this one. So, um, yeah, that might be something for me to play with one day. And then if you watched Wednesday's video, you saw that I was cleaning out the craft cave. Um, I figured I should film it really quick before it became a disaster again, because inevitably I don't put things away. Um I always made my children pick up after themselves. I'm not quite sure what happened here, but they start out neat and then yarn barf happens and it goes everywhere and then I have to reorganize it again and then it looks nice. So I thought I would film it for the five minutes that it probably would look good. But in the course of doing that, I actually weeded through some of my patterns and got rid of stuff I wasn't going to use. And I ran across some patterns that I've set aside um, that I might want to make with some of the yarns that I have. So I'm just going to show them to you really, really quick. Uh, some of these are knit crate ones from the past. This is a crochet pattern, and I really like it. It has, like, different textures over here, but I like the little pointed edges right along the edge of this. I don't know if it is a cowl. It says it's a cowl, so, okay, it's a cowl. I wasn't sure if it was that or if it was a, a shawl that was, like, bunched up. And then there's a couple of these. I'm not sure which one I like better. The top one is a knitted pattern, and the bottom one is a crocheted pattern. And I like them both, so I'm not sure which one I might do there. Here is another knit crate one. I really like this one. It looks very elegant. I don't know that I would do it in purple, but in a more solid color. Depending on the thickness of the yarn, um, it's a sport weight yarn. Okay. Sport weight yarn. I have some sport weight yarn. Um, I think something in a solid, I don't know, so like I said, so much the purple, but I'm thinking something in, <clears throat> I'm thinking something in gray 
or, you know, just a solid, kind of a solid color. I think gray would really look pretty in this because it'd be very versatile. So there's that pattern that I liked. Then I had the um, box that I swapped of yarn with Lucy a while back, and she sent me this pattern along with it. And it's like a one skein pattern, and it's called Brave at Heart by Linda Brown. And I want to make that. Um, I have some standalone skeins, as you saw on the, the video, ones that I'm not going to combine with other things. This might be an option here. Then there is, I don't have a picture of it, but it's called the Raina Shawl or Raina Shawl. It's a free pattern, and it's one of those you can make it as big or as long as you want. It's a good way to use up scrap yarn and things. So this one's a thought. And then I have this one. It's called Asymmetrical Lace Shawl. It's by Anakin Alice. It takes 656 yards. And this is what it looks like. It's in black and white because it's a copy. But I really liked that one. And then this is a paid-for pattern, and I bought it a while back. Like, when I say a while, like a couple years ago, I liked it. I saw it on um, Sandy by the Lakeside. And she was making this, and it's a small shawl. It's not a big one. And I have a gray to black gradient. I think it starts in white. I think it goes white and then it goes real light gray and it goes all the way out to dark charcoal, almost a black color. And I think this would look really pretty in it. So that's called Ardent. And this one is, like I said, a paid for pattern. It's not a free one. Um, and of course the flax light that I'm making and that's what it looks like. And then I ran across this one that I thought was really pretty. It is called, what is the name of it? Be Mine Shawl. And look at this. Is that pretty? It's got these little heart designs in it. And a little pico edging. So I thought it was just kind of sweet looking. And I'm not sure what I would do it in. They did it in like a gradient. Um, so... Yeah, not real sure. Not real sure what I'm going to make it in. It's a lot of garter stitch with um, hearts worked into it. Then I saw this hat and scarf. I have no idea how long I've had this pattern for, but I really like it. It is, does it have a name? I do not even see a name on this. Forest Walk. Okay, it's called Forest Walk. I think I got it out of a book, maybe. I have no idea. It looks like it came out of a book. I don't even know what book anymore. And then this is a pattern that I got from, let's see, Love to Knit, which is in uh, Rhode Island. It's a yarn shop. And I walked in, and they had this pattern on a mannequin. And I really liked it, and I'd, I'd ask them, I said, what is the name of that pattern? And they told me it's called Terraform, and I got home and promptly forgot what it was. So I had to send them an email and say, what again was the name of that shawl? So here it is, and this is a free pattern. I got it off of Ravelry, but this is what it looks like. It has dropped stitches in it. You can kind of see them where the open spots are, um, like right in here. The, that open work there, those are created by dropping stitches, intentionally dropping stitches. So um, that's one I want to make. And then there's this really simple one. It's called the Painted Desert Lace Shawl. Um, Painted Desert is a yarn brand, and I have some of it. And so this was a pattern that came along free at my local yarn store when I bought some of it. So I might make it into that or something to give to somebody, or I'm not sure. Anyway, so those are so, just some patterns that I ran across that I thought would be kind of fun to work my way through them. So now it's time for
Now, the first thing in Come and Get It today is something that I'm actually selling. Uh, if you follow me on Facebook, you already saw these. Um, I am selling two different mini skein set or mini skein sets. Here they are. They are slightly different. Uh, they're both called Bubblegum Bliss, but this is number one. As you can see, it says number one. They both are similar colored, but number one has a little, it's not showing up real well. There's a little bit more yellow right in here. You can see a little bit of the yellow in here. This part, it is lace weight. Um, it is 100% merino lace weight, um, a total of 880 yards or 100 grams. Each of these little mini skeins, and there's five of them, have 176 yards in them. So the um, multicolor one, there you can see a little bit better, is purples and pinks and a little bit of yellow. And then there's two tonal purples and two tonal pinks. And the one pink is slightly darker than the others, you can see. The purples are about the same, but the pinks, one is a little bit darker. And then the other one, which is the lace two, it's, it's the same thing as far as its lace weight. It's 180 yards, um, 176. The only difference is the multi skein has very, very little yellow in it. So it's more just the purples, just the purples and the pinks. There you can see it. And the two, the two pinks are a little bit closer in color. They're tonal, so they're not, there's going to be light and, lighter and darker spots. But as you can see, this pink is not as different from this pink as the other one is. And the purples are the same color. So, and you can knit them together on like a, or crochet them like a, a gradient set. So those are available over on eBay. Um, the say, or the, the auction on them, so they are an auction, you have to place a bid. Uh, those are running they are being sold as an auction, so the auction runs until Wednesday, I think at midnight. So it will be over on the 23rd of January. So that's what I have going on. Now, Annie's, if you weren't already aware, they are doing a huge giveaway. Uh, the giveaway is open from January 1st until February 28th. So you can go over to Annie's to enter. If you need help with entering, uh, there is a tutorial. I will put a link up here. If you click that link, it'll take you to the tutorial that shows you how to do it. Uh, but it is for over $2,500 worth of craft supplies. So they have that running. They also have their Plymouth Yarn Dream uh, Dream Baby DK yarn on sale for $2.99. And their King Cole uh, Vogue DK. They have it. It's kind of a, it's really pretty. It's like a white mixed with another color. So it kind of looks almost painted with a white and another color. Um, and those are on sale as well. And the finesse cotton silk is going for three forty nine, and they also have some universal DK for three forty nine. So they have a lot of their DK yarns for sale right now, and that is Annie's Craft Store. Consumer Crafts is running a sale through Monday, which is January twenty first of two thousand nineteen, and you must use the coupon code Save. Jan 19. And what it is, they are offering 15% off of everything, uh, off of, you know, your entire order, 15% off. If you spend $20, you get, or, yeah, if you spend $50, you get 20% off. If you spend $150, you get 25% off. So uh, they also offer free shipping on any order over $49. So um, it's looking like the $50 is your best bet because you would get 20% off plus uh, free shipping. So anyway, check that out. That is Consumer Crafts. 
And they sell a little bit of everything. They sell all different types of craft supplies. They're sort of like Michael's or Joann's, uh, AC Moore. They're very similar to something like that. Blueprint, which is the, it, it's Craftsy. They've just changed their name. Uh, but Blueprint is selling their Sprightly Acrylic Worsted Weight, which if you remember the poncho I made called the Platadaptation, uh, that's on sale right now for $2.96. So if you would like some really nice quality acrylic yarn, it's the Sprightly Acrylic Worsted. It's $2.96, and that's over on Blueprint. Hobium always runs really good sales, uh, but if you check out their clearance section, uh, they tend to bundle a lot of yarns. Even in their regular section, you can buy one skein, but you get a better deal if you buy, like, five skeins. Uh, so their clearance section, they are always running some really, really super sales. Knit Picks has their, it's called Terrific Tweed. It's a tweed yarn, and it is up to 30% off. And their uh, yarn of the month is called Shine. It's That's the name of the brand, is called Shine, and it is 20% off. Knit Crate uh, is... Uh, running, they always run a 20% off your very first subscription box if you sign up for a monthly yarn subscription. And so it's 20% off and you must use the coupon code KCREATIONS20 in order to get that discount. Lion Brand is running 30% off your favorite Afghan kits. So they've got all different types of Afghan kits over there. So it's the pattern and the yarn and it's 30% off. So they're running that, and in their clearance section, they have bundles of, of three skeins. So they have some of them starting at $2. I think that their DIY yarns are starting at $2 for three skeins of yarn. That's less than a dollar a skein. Um, they also are selling three uh, cakes of mandala yarn for $10. So... Those are really good sales. So those are the sales this week. All of the links are directly down below. If you click the show more in the description box, it'll drop down and you can you can click through those links. It'll take you right over to those sites. Um, I am an affiliate for them, so I do get a small commission out of that, which kind of helps support the channel. So if you would like to check out any of those sales, there's the links right down there below. Like I said, we have upcoming videos. We have two this week. Uh, don't forget to check out Monday's video to see what is in the craft. Oop. Don't forget to check out Monday's video to see what is in the knit crate box. And then on Wednesday will be the very first in the tutorial series on making the flax light sweater. So thanks again for watching, everybody. And I will see you on Monday. Please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't subscribed already, please click the little red subscription button down below. And if you click the little bell icon next to it, it will let you know anytime I post a video. For those of you who come back each week and actually, like, watch me, thank you so much for doing that. Um, I'm having all kinds of fun with doing the YouTube channel and chatting back and forth with you. I do try to respond to all of the comments. So um, just because it's fun and I like to get to know you all. Uh, so please um, leave a comment if you want to talk to me. Uh, you can also chat over on the Facebook page. So um, yeah, I think that's everything. So I hope you have a great week. I'm hoping we get lots and lots of snow so I don't have to go anywhere and I can just curl up with a hot cup of tea and an old movie and crochet and knit to my little heart's content. So Anyway, have a wonderful week, and I will see you again on Monday.